Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. He's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a dude drinking whiskey. And I'm look. I'm an, I'm an aspiring whiskey mood. <laughs> I You'll think, get there. You'll I, get there. I think if I can find your secret whiskey stash, yeah. <laughs> that may be the footing I need to find levels of moochie glory yeah. not yet achieved by mere mortals. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, so Donation welcome day. to Donation Day. Donation We're day. taking a break from reviewing Game of Thrones whiskeys. Yes, we are. Now, and most people don't know this, but in the spirit of full disclosure, uh, Diageo did give both me and Rex a Porsche. Oh. Uh, each. Wait, I was on That's why we're reviewing the Game of Thrones whiskeys. <laughs> like Mary Kay, Where's we my... got like a Diageo Shut the f up. theme colored Porsche. I'll take a Porsche. Yeah, I sold one. I sold yours oh. for whiskey money for the stash. Diageo sucks. But I'm driving sucks. mine. Yeah, Diageo yeah. Sucks. That's why we're reviewing Game of Thrones. Now, are all the whiskeys in the Game of Thrones, those are all, all Diageo. Diageo. All Diageo. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, so, donation day. I wonder how many people are going to think that's not a joke. Dude, oh my god. <laughs> the people, like, I'll see comments where I'm busting your balls. Yeah. It's lighthearted. It's tongue-in-cheek. They really And then people are like, you know, this is pretty sociopathic behavior. Yeah. In what case you're it? wondering, Diageo did not give us any money. Right. No one gave us any money. <laughs> we paid full retail for all the Game of Thrones bottles, and we're doing them as a sort of way to reach out to newcomers to the world of whiskey. Not really. To finding our channel. It's so old and dusty at this point. You, you just want took, to try them? You took so long getting the bottles. to get these whiskeys. Everybody else has done a Game of Thrones review. That's true. We're sort of late to the game. I'm more one. interested because the Game of Thrones new season is coming up. Oh, okay. The final season. And I don't watch it, so I don't care. So I do. I want to just go through the whiskeys. Okay, so. Why are we talking about Game of Thrones? Just donation. Adam Farnsworth. Adam, Adam Farnsworth, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Finally working our way through everybody. Yep. Adam, I think this was like four years ago you gave us this bottle. Now, for those that- It's time for a pour. If you're new to Donation Day, basically we have Magnificent Bastards sending us a lot of whiskeys. We're kind of behind though. So on Donation Day, mm -hmm. we do a bunch of whiskeys that more often than not, they're pretty obscure and it's really hard for most people to find. That's true. And it's not going to be particularly helpful to have its own standalone episode. Nope. So we batch a bunch of those whiskeys together. Done. Okay, okay. we're going to split this one. Ooh, I can smell that from here. This is a four-year-old Oregon single malt whiskey, Portland, from Bull Run Distilling. This is actually their spirit. They distilled and aged it. Yeah. Right? Which is... So cool. Batch number two, bottle number 185, ringing in at 44.85% alcohol. I like that on the nose. You say 44? Man, I'm telling you, is, is, something about, yeah, 44, basically 40, almost 45%. It smells like it has more character than Something the about Oregon. They put out really good malts. No, that, that got the wheels turning, the hamster wheel. Yeah. And you said Oregon, and I, I think there were a couple of other Oregon whiskeys that were also... Surprising. For this, it's surprising on the nose. Yeah. At 45 percent ish, it's got a lot more character and vibrance. I'm getting some 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 notes I wasn't expecting at that low of a proof. You are getting sort of the grain mustiness. You are. You get the dusty grain. I don't know if it's dusty corn. No, no, it's all malt. Yeah. Right. Because usually when I get that dusty note, it's dust. It's, it's dusty it's, with the corn note. This right. is dusty with the maltiness. Right. This reminds me of when we were with Dave tasting the different malts. Yeah. Like biting down into the yeah, dry mold. I wonder, I wonder which one they use. Uh, so I'm getting uh That's weird. I, I feel like I'm getting a hoppy note mm. at the end of that. You know what I mean? Not, like what's presenting as a... So it's... it's. There is... Gosh, funk isn't the right word. I don't think hoppy is the right word. It's not a barrel note. It's not a woody note. But there No, it's is, a grain note. Yeah. This is going to be weird. Imagine a slightly bitter nutmeg. Yeah. Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Just floating it. There's a little bit of a coffee note to it. It's got all the caramel notes you would expect. So dusty, sweet barley. There's not a lot of floral or fruit. Sweet malt. This is very grain forward, grain heavy uh, versus fruit and honey heavy. But it's not overly sweet. But the honey is there. Yeah, but it's not overly sweet. The fruit is not there. I need a little, little another. This is... I really like it. This is something that I feel like I would want to sit with a yeah. full glass for about an hour. Yeah. And see how it unfolded. This is worth exploring. The thing that makes it more no notable is usually whenever you have a whiskey that you're going to explore, a hero whiskey is what we call it. Those are a pretty high proof and there's a lot of flavors going on and you often need a higher proof to have that much 
uh, vibrance going back and forth. This is a pretty low proof, and then you still have that complexity. Yeah, and you're trying that a little water. Definitely worth exploring. Um, it's very oily. The aftertaste. Oh, is it stays with you for days. Lingers. Do you think this was a pot still? Ah, uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, just based on the the mouth feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it is. It's, it changed it a little bit. Oh, it bit. got a little sweeter in the nose. Changed it a little bit with the water. Oh, and the more of the rich um, you know brown getting? sugar showed up. You know what I'm getting? After the water, mm. a few drops of water, and then the aftertaste, very, very little bit, doesn't just wipe out your palate, but the aftertaste of corn nuts. Yeah, that's what my brain was saying was vaguely hoppy. Yeah, the, the kind of the corn nut, um, which is weird. The leavings. But the salt, I'm getting the salt too. Mm. It's a little bit briny, which is weird. Or it feels like it's salty. This is a savory whiskey. I like it. This is a savory versus sweet. I, I really like that. I do too. Yeah, it's super good. Damn it. Okay. All right. This is going in the stash. <laughs> you son of a. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Fortunately, it's a small bottle because your stash is overflowing. There's not much room. I did narrow it down. We did a live stream yesterday evening. I narrowed down the building. That the stash is in, so progress is being made. God bless. Progress is being made. Okay, so this we've got a trio of whiskeys from Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson, you magnificent bastard! So Steve sent us three rides. Okay. And they are all... Wow, look at the cloudiness on that. They are all from Minnesota. That's amazing. Yeah, that is not chill filtered. That is amazing. I don't think you can see it very well. And that's because they proofed it down to 40, but without chill filtering. And that's why... This is why people chill filter. Yeah. Because under 46%, roughly, right. a non-chill filtered whiskey will look muddy and cloudy. It almost looks like the glass is frosted, but it's not. It's, it's not. Clear. It's the whiskey. Yeah. So this is a two-year-old rye whiskey, at least called Runestone, from Jay Carver. Mm -hmm. Now, we've tasted Jay Carver before, Yeah. but not this one, I don't think. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm getting ready for the pour. Wow, that is so cloudy. Th this cloudiness in a whiskey, this is something that most consumers are uncomfortable with. Yeah, they and think that's why chill filtering exists. So please, those people. They think something went off with the bottle, right? Because if you see something that looks like clear and pretty and golden, and and then you see something that looks a little milky and weird that you're unused to, you think, oh, something went wrong with that. This is all rice spice and candy cane. Wow. Black licorice and, can and the, those uh, cherry candy canes. What did you say? Forty percent. Yeah, Here, the nose so, is magnificent. So two in a row, what may be happening is we recently came off of a dry week. Yeah, maybe we're a little more attuned right. to we, it. We may not be acclimated to like actually strong high-proof uh, high whiskeys yet. So you know the candy canes that aren't red and white? They're multicolor and they're slightly cherry tasting instead yeah. of peppermint? Yeah. I get that with black licorice Can I, in the nose. So, so my progression with rye has been very, very slow, mm -hmm. but it's been steady. When I started drinking whiskey, least favorite whiskey is like, I really am never looking forward to a rye, but I found some ryes that I actually really enjoyed. And more and more that so, opened the doorway you get me. a rye that has just classic, bold notes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I can appreciate this. Yes. This is nice. As opposed to just thin, astringent, sharp tastes. Yeah, this is a bold, classic rye notes for me. You get this the, is really good. None of the new uh, piney green notes. Mm. It's kind of rich. The aftertaste stays a little astringent. Rice spice, a little bit of that um, anise licorice note, mm -hmm. and uh, some honey mixed in there. And on the taste, it feels a little closer to 40% than what I was expecting from the nose. Yeah. The taste isn't... It sort of thins out towards it, the end. It did. It, does. it starts really magnificent, and then... Whew, it flattens and gets a little bitter in the aftertaste. But I dig it. I dig it. I dig the notes, and then the longer it lingers, the less it just kind of fades and becomes underwhelming. But that first sip, that first blush, is really nice. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to try this at a higher proof. Let's try his next one. I'd be interested to try this at a higher proof, but I think at 40%, uh, big classic rye notes that are well, well executed. We're moving to the next Steve Anderson bottle. The next Steve Anderson. Which is this one called a... Punish 95. The next Steve Anderson joint. So this is from Ooh. Ooh. Bent Brewery. 
Or brew stillery. Bent brew stillery. This is, uh, oh, this is 95% rye. This is 47.5% alcohol. This is very beery on the nose. Yeah. Very beery. And, um... It's a word, by the way. What's weird is a little bit of um, teriyaki beef jerky. Oh, shut your face. You're just making stuff up now. Teriyaki. No, because I just had some teriyaki beef jerky last night, and I was like, what does this remind me of? It to... reminds me of that teriyaki beef jerky yeah. I had last night. You need to floss. Yeah. I like that. You know what? I think I like whiskey. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that taste is friendly. Man, you know what? Minnesota is making some really tasty rye whiskey. That is nice. And I get what you mean by friendly. It doesn't have even that 40% rye we just tried. Mm -hmm. That was bolder with the classic whiskey notes. This seems... This is prettier. This is prettier, friendlier, a little bit more balanced. But um, honestly, if you were going to give me this in a blind tasting, mm -hmm. I don't think I would guess it would be rye heavy. A rye dominant. Yeah, it's 95% rye. Yeah, I would not have guessed that. I wouldn't have either. It does not present as the classic rice spice. Did you have water to your, water to yours? Mm -hmm. It didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It made the sugar aftertaste more sugary. Okay. There is a sweet finish. Yeah. Yeah. It is like a sh sugar is the word. It's yeah, white, it's just actual sugar. White grain sugar. It reminds me of the aftertaste of a sweet tea. Yeah. Where it's like just a sweet sugary after. And then on the nose, go back to the nose after a few sips. The nose gets more interesting. Okay, so that one I felt like I wanted to explore a little longer. This, this one, one less, I just enjoy. It gets less interesting as time goes. But uh, it but becomes a background whiskey. I feel like the design is is confusing. I would avoid this whiskey just because of the label. It's so weird. It looks like it should be some spicy barbecue sauce. It does, or hot sauce. <laughs> Punish ninety five makes me think this is a bottle, a giant bottle of hot sauce. Right there, some, spice, <laughs> some kind of sauce. Yeah, some kind of sauce. So the prettiness. Uh, turns it into just a background whiskey pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Something that you would just sip as you're paying attention and doing something else. And finally, this one, that one I, he gave, I'm gonna, is this I the last? It. Is this the last one? No, 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 we've got like three more bottles to do. It's donation day, man. You gotta pace yourself. This is Asante Spirits, from and I thought, oh, this looks like a guy? liqueur. No, no, same guy, also from Steve. Yeah, did, he did three. Should we bastard Steve more than once? I don't know, what do you think? Steve, blah, blah, It's yeah. open. I know. Careful. I know, I know. All right. If I know anything, I don't know dick about whiskey, but I can bastard people like a bouse. <laughs> Steve Anderson, you magnificent bastard. Okay, so this is aged at least three and a uh, four half years. Rural and heart, punk rock in its soul. Really? Huh. What, the cranes fighting is punk rock? I guess, yeah. It's probably Everybody like, knows fighting cranes is super punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a big lanky slap fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, this one right. uh, immediately and it's a 40, is creamy smelling in the nose. 43%, like, um, 43%. Like uh, actual ice cream. Yeah, I get that. Which like is a, weird, like a strawberry or a berry kind of see, ice cream. I would have said like a cinnamon ice cream. Cinnamon maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get that. Cinnamon ice cream and maybe some uh, some cooked apple slices in there. Yeah, this makes me want to really try this one. Ooh, there's Ooh. the cinnamon. This might be my favorite of the three. There's the cinnamon. So the first one was interesting because it was complex. Yeah. The second one was cool because it was so friendly. Right. This one mm -hmm. is complex enough to not be boring. Yeah. But pretty tasting. And in, in, for me... It's the middle ground. It's For me, right. the, the main note, this isn't necessarily a balanced whiskey. The main note, there's a few things going on, but right. the main note is a cinnamon note. Horchata. That cinnamon milk. Mexican oh, cinnamon milk. yeah. Yes. Yes, cinnamon milk. That's nice, man. That's really good. Oh. Well, damn, man. This is a dessert. If you feel like a cinnamon dessert. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Steve Sweet Anderson. Sweet cinnamon, a little bit of a little bit of creaminess. Kurt there. Miller, our uh, our team rye sommelier, really? he's always trying to convince everybody that rye is the best whiskey. <laughs> he would be proud of us today. I'll give you it's a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kurt. Okay, so we're moving on. Mm -hmm. We're moving on to a uh, gift from a brand. Uh. uh... So, do we have a name of the brand or the person, the rep? It's uh, Tyler Merchant. Tyler Merchant, you whiskey rep.
Okay. So, <laughs> this is epic. Baltimore epic rye. So, uh, he sent us this, what, six months ago? And then, actually, I was putting this on the list for today's video, and yesterday he emailed saying, Hey, just check it in. <laughs> you, know what you, get to ch you know what you get for checking in? Back of the line. <laughs> I, so, I, this is cool. Oh, this is minty. I feel like I've seen this on a shelf. You've seen it in our shelf, because it's been sitting in here oh, for six months. That's probably true. Yeah, it, this has got a minty nose. What kind of mint? Like a like a spearmint, a peppermint? A, oh, spearmint, not peppermint. Yeah, spearmint, which I actually really hate spearmint. <laughs> but it is, but and I don't like the I don't hate the way it smells. I don't like the taste of spearmint. Right. But that spearmint is a different kind of minty. It's not candied minty. It's like it's mint as a spice. Yeah. Right? So I think somewhere between mint leaves, like the actual leaves, and spearmint, like the candy spearmint. So yeah. Right now here's On a cool the thing. On this the is. 100% rye, okay. but it's 75% rye grain and 30% malt rye malt. So, what so malted rye. What the hell is it? It means, well, malting is a process you can do to any grain. Okay. Now, then typically in the industry, malt, if you only say the word malt, it's synonymous with barley. Right. But technically you could malt rye, you can malt corn, you can malt barley. Just a moment for the, just <laughs> to step back and appreciate the number of things in the world of whiskey that are counterintuitive and weird yeah. and confusing. Yeah. And what works in one country doesn't work in another country. Yeah. It's, it, if you're ever confused about whiskey, you're in good company. Join the club. Because it truly is a giant cluster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going for the taste. This smells interesting. Yeah, me too. This is Baltimore. Baltimore, making a whiskey. Making a whiskey and the TV show The Wire. Dude. <laughs> so it's everything you expect from the nose, but the mouthfeel on that. It's, it is viscous and thick and just um, like buttery feeling. Wow, this is unlike any of the rye we've tasted up until now. And, well, I'll say a thicker, I'm still getting some cinnamon. It's still going. I'm still getting, yeah. No, yeah. the oil on this is ridiculous. And you're right, cinnamon is yep. what gets left behind. Yeah. Still, oh, that's right nice. now, I'm still tasting... So, cinnamon. So that's two in a row. Is cinnamon a common rye note, or did we just get a coincidental? No, two? it's it it's it's common in rye. Okay, common in rye. All right. Uh, oh, they're doing copper pot distillation on this. Mm. That's why it's so thick, rich, and oily. Yeah, yeah. They're distilling in the style of Scotch whiskey, mm. double distilled pot distilled whiskey. Mm -hmm. Right, which leaves all the heavy, low, long chain. I wish it wasn't a rep because now it's more awkward for me to I know, say this. Bottling it I think of the rise that we've tried today, mm -hmm. this is probably my favorite one we've tried today. That doesn't feel like, this This feels like a mid to high 40s on the proof. What is this? It's 50. It's 50, okay. It's and 50. good on them, man. Making your own stuff. N not, only relative, not only relatively high proof, but also pot still. And it's straight. Yeah. So, Damn. and there's no age state. Oh, no, no, less than two years. Okay. So at That's least two years. Less than two years? At least two years. At least. You can't call least, something straight unless it's right. at least two at years. At least two years. At least. Yeah. Two. But well done. And they did them in full size barrels. So mm -hmm. these guys were patient. Mm -hmm. And they made it with a process where waste was more than in a typical column still process. Right. Which means they are prioritizing quality and flavor over process. So I'm getting a big classic rice spiciness with this really buttery, rounded off, smooth cinnamon note that just swells up and stays with you. This is probably one of the longest finishes that I've ever had on a rye. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Kurt Miller, get yourself a bottle of this one. Even after you, you're finished the sip, you're still left with 80% of the flavor for several, several seconds here. I'm, yeah, well, I'm 20 seconds after the, the sip. You know what's funny is, here's what, now that you say that, here's what's weird about this whiskey. Mm -hmm. the, the taste of the whiskey feels short, but the after yeah. taste feels forever. You get this big it's swollen, like a comet. A big swollen burst of the classic rye and the cinnamon, and then and it's this just long tail. Long tail. The uh, it's like a comet where the rock that's creating the giant fire trail yeah. is you know about the size of a baseball or small or golf ball, mm -hmm. but it's creating this massive streak across the sky. It's the meteorite of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, what's the next one? Well done. Okay. We are about to get fancy. Ooh. Are you ready to get fancy? Hold on, let me warm up my pinky. All right. Laura. Got, got the reps in. Laura Brown. Laura Brown. Laura, she gave us. Laura Brown, you. She was the one who gave us you, all of the. Um, you mag that. She was the one who gave us all the. Laura Brown, you mag us Master. She gave us the Scottish hats that you thought were racist. <laughs> um, but again, again, not really. Not, he's just joking. Just joking. My God. Oh, no sense of humor. Look, she also gave us glassware oh, from the single malt, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. What? What? Man. So she got us two bottlings. Oh. One of their bottlings of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Right. Right. And Wait. we're gonna try both. Yes. Yes. And one that she hand bottled. Oh. Okay. This is quarter cask, second fill. So she Pedro and then as Sherry went to the. She went to and <laughs> hand bottled. This is. Impressive. That's cool. This is definitely getting into the locked cabinet. And I really like these glasses. I've seen these before, but I never owned one. Um, I joined the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I got one then, but I've never used it. Can I say what I really like about these glasses? One, it's a good shape because you kind of want uh, your whiskey glasses, if you're drinking it neat, to have a Tulip shape, yeah. kind of a small opening. We actually have a video on our other channel talking about whiskey glasses, the right one for you. But it forces you. You have no choice but to put that pinky up. You really, there's no room. <laughs> it's a good thing I warmed there's, up. Yeah, there's no room. You there's just gotta work that, <laughs> just, this is called snob workouts. Uh, no, and two, that's and not, and three, that's and snob. four. <laughs> people, people getting into I'm just the kidding. whiskey appreciation. Uh, okay. Oh, the nose on this is perfume. You know what I just got a flash of? Hmm. This may make no sense. I don't care. I'll say things anyways. I got a flash of the Nectar Dwar. Yeah. Glenn Morangy Nectar Dwar. I think you're right on the Oh, bike. yeah. Yeah. Come on. This one's a little more sour on the nose. Nah, but... Well, I mean, directionally. Oh, absolutely. Things that are happening in the Nectar Dwar. The Glenn Morangy Nectar Dwar are kind of great. And this. This is one of the most perfume heavy. Nose as I've picked up in a while. It's beyond floral. Perfume is the word. This is. Uh, I mean, this is like full on walking through Nordstrom's and one of the Rhett sprays perfume in the air yeah. as you walk by. And I'm getting one dominant perfumey note. Maybe on the taste, there's some more subtlety. No, it tastes exactly like it smells. That is pure perfume with a slight oaky finish. Well, hold on. Like peppery spice to the end of it. I'm not getting the oak. I'm getting this incredibly sweet and rich and buttery pear on the finish. I missed the oak ah, entirely. See, I haven't eaten pear long and recently enough to remember what pear tastes like. I missed the oak entirely. It's a sweet, rich, buttery pear for me. This is 60% alcohol. And it lands with a bang, right? That finishes. Mm -hmm. You get everything you're expecting. It's perfumey, and that perfumey just boom, mm. a big, giant, buttery, just you want to try a little water in this since it's 60%? Out. No, man, this is already kind of amazing. Yeah. No, let me See, get one more sip in and then we'll, we'll ruin it. With I'll try water. it and tell you what it does first. I'm a huge fan of the sing uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Oh. So if you like the Glenn Morangy offerings, I think you'd probably really like like this. Did, did we know the proof on the thing she bottled herself? That's what I just said. It's 60% alcohol. Why are you always surprised when I don't listen? Because you said, yeah, okay. You actually responded. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> this 60.7% proof. It's better with a little water. Well, the thing that we completely glossed over, 60.7% proof is very high. Or a percent alcohol, not yes, yeah, 60.7% yeah. yeah. alcohol is very high. Yeah. This does not punch you in the mouth. No, like, it does Like 60% sugar. No, not even close. At all. Not even close. Not even, oh my goodness. Now try it with water and it all the complexity shows up. Oh, isn't that oh. good? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a little vanilla in there. Yeah, I found the oak now. Yep, it unlocked the oak. You get that slight twinge of bitterness. Wow, that is okay. Drink that and let's rinse your glass. That is heartbreaking because there's not much of it. There's not much of and it, and then that's it forever. And then that's it forever. So guys. Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna get a new glass. This video is already 20 something minutes long. And Chad's sick this week. Yeah. 
Hey, buddy. But you know what? We're giving him a couple of days to edit this one. Yeah, you gotta be fine. You got days. Okay. So one of my favorite things about the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society yeah. is how they name their bottlings yeah. as like titles instead of anything else. Yeah. Strawberry cheesecake macaroons. Come on, that's fun, <laughs> right? One of the ones, uh, it's a bit on the nose, Scotch Malt Whiskey well, Society. Well, no, one of the ones down in my office is the Bramble Hunter. The something Bramble Hunter. Oh. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or, uh, or uh, jumping down the rabbit hole or something like that. Oh, These yeah. are the titles, right? Yeah. That's fun. Right. Now this. So for those that don't oh. know. You ready for okay, a pour? Okay, we'll do that. For those that don't know, the Sculpture Malt Whiskey Society is what? So, they are an independent company that started as a club. And what they do is they, uh, now they're a company that buys single barrels mm -hmm. from distilleries all over Scotland yeah. and then release them without making any changes. Can we do that? Uh, sometimes proofing down, sometimes not proofing down at all. Right. Uh, and that's why you'll get, like for example, this is 11 years old. It was distilled on the tw on two in 2006 July. Right. It's a space side. It's a bourbon cask. And it's one of 240 bottles. Oh. So the odds of anybody watching this ever getting this is basically zero. There's a reason why it's on donation day. Yeah. Um, but that's all they do is they just go, they roam around finding interesting casks, yeah. buying them and bottling them and then naming it. That model? Yeah. Can we do that here in the States? Uh, not, ex not the way that they do. Okay, just laws? Well, because we have to rectify it once we bring it over. What? Now, we could do it if we didn't do anything. It just showed up in bottles. If it showed up in bottles and it never hit our distillery, then right. we could do it. Okay. All right. So, on the nose, I'm getting strawberry cheesecake and macaroons. Now, she said that this is from the Altervan distillery. I've never heard of it. Which was founded in, it's a, it's a newer distillery, 1975. Okay. okay. Was its beginning. All right, yeah. Uh, founded by Chivas, yeah. uh, owned by Seagram at the time, um, oh, to make... Uh, stuff for blends, right? Already on the nose, you, you you get the sense that there's a lot going on in here. This is going to be a nice, this is, I'm going to say sweet, as a broad stroke right off the bat, this is going to be a sweet whiskey, but it's not going to be one note sweetness. There's going to be a lot of things going on. Due to the power of suggestion, I really can get strawberry cheesecake. And macaroons? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't know what a macaroon is. Mm. It's a type of cookie, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, type of cookie. I don't. I don't ever remember trying one. But a lot the, of there's a lot of coconut in it. But the strawberry, you get that on the nose. Just think coconut. Oh, the taste is great. It's got all the bite. It's not only pretty. Um, oh, you son of a... Wow. That taste is way better than the smell. No, it is. This smells really nice. The yeah, smell... but the taste is next level complexity. So, I'm going to have to hunt for the coconut. I, 50. I, I'm getting the strawberry... Like a yeah. punch, like a punch in the mouth, and the cheesecake, that creamy, uh, twenty fifty eight percent alcohol. Shut your face. Yeah, shut your face. I know. How do like I'm I'm legitimately curious. How do a lot of these whiskeys come out with a an objectively high proof? Like when you're right. in sixty percent territory, that's that, take your head off. But it's not bitey. Whereas stag is at sixty. And oh bite my your god! Head it's some, there's the American difference whiskeys. is there's the, American well, there's American whiskeys that at that higher proof it'll just knock your damn block off. And then we just had two in a row. The difference two is new barrel. Really high whiskey. Oh, because it's stag new barrel. New barrel ah. and hot and hotter climate. Okay. New yeah. barrel, hotter climate. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference. Wow. Because I would I would lose thousands of dollars betting that I could nail the proof on the last two whiskeys we had, which I'm usually pretty good at. I would put this in the high 40s. Yeah, oh, like I would say- But I wouldn't put it by- I would say, I would say 50 give or take two in either direction. Mm -hmm. Not at all 60 or above. Laura, she's a knight, by the way. Mm. We're knights of the round table, which we you, dance whenever we're able. <laughs> which we can't really talk a lot about on this channel. But we have another channel where we can talk about that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey Tribe. Wink, wink. I introduced my boys and your boys to Monty Python you're, Holy Grail. You're very proud of that. For the first time in their young lives. You're very proud of that. They I, enjoyed it. I am very proud of that. They enjoyed it. I fast forwarded through the naughty castle bits, but that was it. Whatever. Man, was that the last one? Yeah. It's a good one to go out on. It really is. That's why I saved it for the end. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.
Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.